Hello all, welcome back to Shave My Peg Leg. Thank you for all joining me. Um, yes, it's a face shave tonight. And no, I'm not wearing the cape tonight. It is extremely flipping hot in this bathroom tonight. I have no idea why it is so hot in here tonight. It's, it's like there's a fire under the floor. It is ungodly tonight. I don't know why. Alright, anyways. I know it's supposed to be samples of September for me. But come on guys. This is getting ridiculous. We have single edge September. Sample September. Suicide Awareness Prevention Month of September. Let's pick one and go with it. We can't, we can't have all three going. Oh, we also have Sterling September going. There's four. Forgot about that. All right. So I usually do some uh, sample September. I've been doing sample September. But I got this in, and I don't want to wait till October to do it. Because I will definitely be the last one to do Never Alone 2. And to bring attention to this, it is Suicide Awareness Prevention Month. So, let's do this one. Ooh, I just noticed. Look at my lip. See the label? That's not cool. I think that's the way it was shoved in the box. Because it was kind of crammed in there. That's not cool. Anyways. This is a woodsy, musky smell. It's almost almost like a barbershop to me not quite but almost it's like on the edge I mean, you can call anything a barbershop but it's it's a cologne type woodsy musky scent um, good soap it's in A&E's new KE2 base with the emu oil I've got some it's a really soft soap it is really soft it's not a cream, but it's damn near. And it, it's it's not even a crope. It's not that firm to me. Cropes are a little bit more firm than this. This is really soft. Um, my granite bowl, I love this bowl. This thing's so flipping heavy. But it's it's got the nice coarseness in it to whip up. So you do not need much of KE2 from what I've been seeing to get a hellacious lather. Um, I got my 24 millimeter aka brushworks number 15 um, never alone to that um, brush with the coin okay like that all right I was right I just shook it out yeah you don't need to soak a, a synthetic brush this is their uh, g5c knot and you don't need to soak a synthetic. You can just dip it in water and then go for it. Like I said before, I like to soak them in hot water just to warm the bristles up. Okay. This might turn into a face lather because all that soap that was in the bottom of my bowl is going into the brush. But it's not lathering. Either I need more water or I can just do it right on the face, which I'm probably going to go ahead and do. Probably just going to go ahead and do that on the face. I was going to use the, the King Oscillating Razor for this shave. But after doing more research, like watching Subi shaves, he, he did one with his head shave. And the blades need to be mod um, modern, excuse me a second, modern um, DE blades can work in this razor, but they do need to be modified. Or in the, not in this razor, but in the uh, King Oscillating Razor. They do need to be modified, but they will work. And I'm just probably going to do a video on me modifying the blade and then do a shave video with it. So I'm going to use my 1940-something fat handle tech I just got in. That, that thing's beautiful. Look at that. It's a beautiful razor, and this is the case it came in that I had. Like I said, guys, I, I'll sleep on it. I, I was going to buy it, and I said, no, let me sleep on it. It's fifty-four fifty. Let me sleep on it. I'm not sure I want to pay that much. It's a little overpriced, maybe. Um, it's a, Let me sleep on it. I slept for about two, two and a half hours, woke up, and bought it. Um, like I said, I had to buy this pack of blades separate, but as you can see, they're still, still sealed. 1450 was outrageous to me, but 
I got the full set now. This case is absolutely, absolutely, it's got this one dark line. And that's from, from this ring right here on the razor. Not using a pre-shave because Kaizen bases, you really don't need a pre-shave. Peter's soaps are super slick. And I just saturated myself. And no, I'm not wearing my my apron tonight. It's like it's just too freaking hot. Like I said, it's it's just I'm gonna have to beat this shit out of this to get it out of the brush. Or maybe because it's the first time I've used this brush. It's not the first time it's seen water because when I got it in, I cleaned it and I put that pearl or prowl, excuse me, prowl um, daily clarifying shampoo in the palm of my hand and I whipped the shit out of that into a lather and cleaned the brush and then set it out to dry. So this isn't the first time it's seen water and it's not the first time it's seen soap. It's just the first time it's seen shave soap. Yeah, I was going to use that King Oscillator, and I just, the more I looked into it, and I was like, okay. Yes, it, the blades fit in there. Modern day TEs fit into it, no problem. They just don't oscillate because of the design of the slots. They don't oscillate. They've got to be modified a little bit. I don't have a problem doing that because it's not like I'm going to use that razor all the time. If I use it twice a year, I'll get two and a half years worth of uses out of it if I get five uses out of the blade I put into it. So, you know, <laughs> it's not that big of a deal to me to, to modify a blade for it. Man, this stuff is super slick. I prefer, um, I don't care, I can face lather. You guys seen me face lather before. I don't mind face lathering. I prefer to bowl like lather because I feel like I can control my lather better in a bowl than I can on my face. I can get it exactly where I want in a bowl easier than I can on my face. All right, we'll go with that. Okay. I'm sorry. I had to look at something. Oh, sorry. I'm using a, uh, Fourth use on a Gillette Silver Blue. Using a Gillette razor, I might as well use a Gillette blade, right? And I'm really, really beginning to like these silver blues even a little bit more than the Platinums. And I really like their Platinums. Now while I think the Platinums are a little sharper, I think the Silver Blues Are a little smoother. And usually sharp correlates with smooth more than 
not as sharp, but whatever. Oh, I was supposed to do three passes against the grain, wasn't I? Well, crap. I guess we'll have to do that next time. Because I did three passes uh, with the grain, three passes across the grain, and I hadn't done three passes against the grain. We'll do that next time. This is a great scent, guys. If you didn't get the soap, look for the next drop. I missed... Um, I missed the drop for Never Alone. The first, first go-around was the last year. I missed that drop completely. Like I said, I was going to get it, and I missed, I missed the beginning of the drop. And I went in like three, four hours after it dropped, and it was gone. There was none left. And I noticed, I was on my computer and my laptop watching this one, and I noticed the aftershave sold out a lot quicker than the soap. And this, from what everybody was saying, this scent here on this, on Never Alone 2, isn't as dark as Never Alone, that they lightened. It's not, it's, more, this one's brighter, let's say, than, you know I like my dark scents. And this is plenty dark. This, this soap is plenty dark. For me so if the other one was darker I probably would have really liked it but they're saying yeah it's 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 got more of a darker element to it than this one all right September 17th 1859 oh wrong way see talking again I already did the three three passes with the green. Didn't work. Okay, before I start on this, did you know that the United States had an emperor in its early days? The United States had an emperor. Emperor Norton the first. I think I got myself right there. Norton the first. Emperor of the United States. So so self proclaimed on September seventeenth, eighteen fifty nine. He was a San Francisco resident since eighteen forty nine. Um, he was born in Cape Town, South Africa, um, February 4th of 1818. He was born in Cape Town, South Africa. And he moved to the United States with his family. Oh, no, wait, by himself, I'm sorry, by his family. So, via Liverpool, he went to Liverpool then the United States in 1846, or 1845. Landed in the United States and established himself in, eight, in 1846. And then by 1849, it made his way to San Francisco. Oh, I got myself pretty good. I ain't bleeding, I ain't shaving. So, 1849, he made himself, made his way to San Francisco. And he was a commodities trader and a real estate speculator in San Francisco. And he speculated there was a rice famine in China at the time when he was in San Francisco. And a ship full of rice came up from Peru to San Francisco. And he speculated on the price of rice going up because of the rice famine in China. So he bought the whole shipment at 12 cents a pound, which is expensive back then. It cost him like 25 grand. Well, shortly after he, he was speculating that price rice was going to go way up because there was a rice famine in China.
But what he did not know is that there were several more ships behind that one coming in with rice from Peru. Which made the price of rice drop to three cents a pound. And he refused to pay his contract of 12 cents a pound. So there was a long drawn out lawsuit of a couple years over that which he ended up losing his main argument was that his agent he bought the rice from never told him there was more ships of rice coming in and the shipping agent argument was you never asked which he has a point so he went broke but he resurfaced after a couple years. He went broke. He was broke. He was destitute. But he resur resurfaced a couple years later and started printing money with his likeness and name on it and declared himself Emperor of the United States. And he also put out edicts and official notices and everything. He ordered the United States Congress to disband, that it was illegitimate. Um, and he also ordered his self-appointed general of his army to storm Congress and arrest all congressmen. Of course, nothing ever happened. Nobody ever marched on Washington. Nobody could storm Congress. Nothing ever happened. Then in 1863, Napoleon III invaded Mexico. And he added to his title, Defender of Mexico, or Defender of Mexico. The guy was a little eccentric. That's, that's putting it mildly, right? All right, through here, and through here again. So anyways, he petitioned... Queen Victoria, I think it was Victoria or was it Elizabeth at the time? No. Couldn't have been Elizabeth. Yes, it was Victoria. He petitioned Queen Victoria to marry him and unite the countries and bring them together in marriage. She never responded to him. She ignored him completely. And he only and the only figure of authority that he could get, only president, leader of any country that he could get to recognize him as Emperor of the United States. Don't ask me to pronounce this guy's name because I will fail horribly. He was the king of Hawaii. He was the only one that recognized him as the Emperor of the United States. Because at that time, Hawaii was having its own problems with the United States. But again, he started printing his own money with his likeness on it. and. Establishments he frequent, frequented recognized the money and used it with it as legal tender along with the U.S. currency, but they also used that as legal tender. But only the establishments he frequent, frequented would use it as legal tender. He started becoming... tourist attraction. People went to San Francisco just to see the Emperor of the United States. He had nothing. His self-made up power and everything. His own edicts. But he, he had no, no country, no army, no nothing.
And then on February 8th of 1880, he collapsed on the corner of California and DuPont Street. Uh, DuPont is now called Grant Street. And died before he could get any medical treatment. Nobody knows what he died of. Most likely a heart attack or a stroke. Because they say he just collapsed on the corner. That's clean. Okay. And San Francisco held a funeral for him. And they estimate that 10,000 people turned out for his funeral. That's good. That's BBS right there, guys. It's not a lot, but we'll make it work. Interesting for that character. I am Napole I am Norton the first, Emperor of the United States, from this day forth. It's just the only other person he could get to recognize him as Emperor was another guy that was having a problem with the United States government at the time. <laughs> the King of Hawaii. We've all heard stories about Queen Victoria. Could you imagine her getting a letter from him? Asking her to marry him so they could unite the two countries? She is probably like, I am not amused. <laughs> we are not amused. I'm sure he scared the hell out of Napoleon III, too. Oh, guys, there was just tingling. This gave me like a one and a half. It wasn't much. But there was just tingling on my face. It wasn't even worth keeping on there that long. Well, Walgreens, Witch Hazel. Yeah, when he declared, declared himself protector of Mexico, I'm sure Napoleon III was crap in his drawers. What do you think? Never alone to splash. <clears throat> there are still monuments in San Francisco to this day of, of Emperor Norton. N O R T O N. Good restrictor, Peter. Real good restrictor. That is different than the soap. That has a different scent note. I'm trying to place it. Nivea Men Cream. Roll it around that aftershave on my hands. Oh yeah. Gentlemen. All right, real quick, I've been using this the last couple days. This is one, I think I call them microfiber towels. They're not, they're just nylon. They're plastic, like those scrunchies you get at Walmart or Walgreens or wherever the hell you get them. They're plastic balls of wrapped up like this, but wrapped up into a ball, and they're called, they, most people call them a loofah, but they're not really a loofah. A loofah is like a sponge on a stick. But anyways, they, um, 
it's they're kind that's towels kind of like that it's nylon it's plastic it only takes a couple of hours to dry when it gets wet but this is scratchy it's a scratchy material it does not soften over time I mean it might but I've only used it a couple times um, it's almost like using a new bore brush on your skin if you've ever used a new bore brush you know how they they feel they're real scratchy clean my chrome here so anyway so <sighs> exfoliator big time it will take all your dead skin I was looking for the word I couldn't find it it was in my mouth not in my head um, it will exfoliate your skin real real well and that's and they're long enough that you can do this across your back and give your back a good scrub I mean, when was the last time you were able to scrub your back like that unless you've got one on a stick um, but yeah you could do that with that in the shower and because it's so scratchy and rough it picks up soap so really 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 well and when you rub it together and make the lather it lather blows up in them and you can scrub yourself and exfoliate your skin and really get a good scrub and good wash and the thing about those as opposed to something like this this, even when it's rinsed out, will hold bacteria in it after it dries. That will not, because it's plastic, it won't hold anything. The water drips off of it. It, it doesn't dry in it. Um, so, yeah, it's they're basically bacteria-free. If you want to wash them and throw them in a washing machine, you can. Do not throw it in your dryer. It will melt in the dryer. I guarantee it will melt, and you'll have plastic all over everything in the dryer. So if you wash it in the washing machine, take it out and let it hang dry. Or you can just wash it and soak in your, by your hand in the sink and then hang it up to dry. But I like it because it exfoliates really, really well and it makes a hell of a lather with the soap. And those ball ones, they get shit down into the middle of them. And you can't get it out. And they, they will hold bacteria too. That will not. You can spread it out and let it air dry. All right. So they're not a microfiber. They're a plastic. I mean, it's, it's their nylon, so they're plastic. All right, guys, this, I want to thank Jason at the Razor Company. I want to thank Peter Charkalis of Ariana and Evans for doing the soap and the splash. And I want to thank Justin, the Red Island Shaver, for bringing this to us to help promote suicide prevention or suicide awareness prevention month of September. I, I really I appreciate them bringing that to the forefront. Um... I had a great uncle that did commit suicide. Um, my grandfather's brother. So, yes, um, it affects everybody. And you're never alone out there. There's always somebody to call. You can contact anybody in this community, pretty much, and they will help you through your problems. They will talk with you. All right, it goes for me, too. All right, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate you being here. Thank you to those three guys, Jason, Peter, and Justin. For bringing this to us and our awareness of it and let's celebrate this month by promoting suicide prevention awareness all right guys thank you very much i appreciate it done with the babbling back eye in the camera you're in the chair next happy shaves out there guys